to my gardening vlog. This week, I start with a trip to my favourite garden centre. My peas are uncovered and evicted. My beetroot get the snip. The spring onions get planted out. And I make a great lunch with some of my kale. <laughs> So I've just come back from um, purchasing some things at this fantastic garden centre. And I just want to show you before I get home. Um, and mind you, I, did, I, th I think I wore the wrong clothes because it's a bit chilly. Um, okay. Now, to me, any garden centre, any garden centre that sells this here is a winner in my books. So this is Gallangal. I mean, how many garden centers do you know that sells Gallangal like this? So I was already, when I saw it, I thought to myself, what is that? Is that an ornamental? But no, it is Gallangal. Now I had some Gallangal and I let it die. <sighs> Mind you, I did have it for quite a few years. Um, but then, yes, unfortunately it... Um, popped its clogs is that what you say is that the saying I suppose that's the saying I'm trying I've just put some little things down on this seat on this front seat next to me um oh, just so that I could show you how great this garden center is the other thing about this garden center that I just couldn't say no to was they were selling in their herb section they have the most amazing herb section they were selling Thai basil seedlings how fantastic is that? Again, if any garden seller, garden centre, I can't even say it, is selling Thai basil seedlings, you snap them up as quickly as you possibly can. I also got some normal basil seedlings as well. How wonderful. And I got some coriander. Um, I actually just went to get some bedding. And look at this ranunculus. Isn't it absolutely fantastic? What a fantastic colour. It was the only one that they had in that colour. So, of course, I snapped that up. Got some tarragon. Um, I got a very pretty auricula here as well. Ah, look. What a fantastic garden centre this is. And if you are in Lincolnshire, this garden centre is called Pennells. It is absolutely wonderful. I think the last time I came to this garden centre was, um, oh, it must have been summer last year. I'd been to a garden, an open garden in Lincolnshire, and the people there said, oh, I saw this wonderful plant, and I said, where did you get it from? And they said, oh, we got it from Pennells. Like, I should have actually known what Pennells was, um, and I didn't. So I asked them, and they said, oh, you've got to go there. And this, this garden centre is absolutely fantastic it's about a 20 minute drive from my place but it is well and truly worth it in my opinion i absolutely love it it has they have the most unusual plants and all of their plants are really um great condition as well okay so i think it's time to take this structure off my peas I'm thinking about it. I'm still thinking about it as I stand here, actually. But um, I'm going to do it. I'm going to take the structure off the peas. And hopefully, with the heat from the wall that's behind it, the peas will be okay. And if we get any kind of frosts, I will cover them with fleece. So, yeah. Okay, let's do it. So it's Fruits Day on the Moonphase calendar and I'm here in the kitchen garden 
and this bed here is very, very weedy. But I'm glad that I've taken the structure apart now because I can get in and actually weed it. Those kind of tents, those grow tents are okay. The only trouble is that the zippy part of them is only on one side. So in order, to, order to get into the other side to weed, you have to kind of climb into the frame and you can see there's a bar just here, which is, makes it very, very awkward. Um, so, <laughs> As a result, well, actually looking at it, as a result, I should have been weeding the front, but I never did. Um, but my peas, these peas in here, are now ready for the next lot of canes. And um, so I'm just taking a gamble that it's not going to get too cold and they're really established now. Um, and I think they should be fine, actually. So these peas here are Oregon sugar pod. They're a kind of, um, well, they've grown as a monge to or a snow pea, but you can actually have them as a potted pea if you want as well. They're really delicious at every stage in their life and including the uh, tips as well. I'm not a big pea tip eater, but, um, if you come outside and have a little munch on them, they are delicious. And I notice that at the moment there is no um, pea weevil. Now saying that, now that I've taken this top off this thing, it'll probably come and, you know, eat all the leaves. Pea weevil is that thing that makes all the notches in the leaves. They don't really eat the um, peas they just eat the leaves. And if you have really small plants, they can be a bit of a pain. So that's why I grow everything in modules. I get them to a decent size and then I plant them out. And speaking of which, I sowed these on the 10th of January this year. I had them in modules, like I said, they started inside. I then brought them out into the greenhouse They've done really well. And now look at them. <laughs> I'm hoping, they haven't flowered yet, but I am hoping to get some peas or some monge too from these. Ooh, beginning of May now, fingers crossed. I also have another bed over yonder um, with my sugar snap peas as well. They're not as established as these ones, but they are still doing really good and they are outgrowing the little cloche that's over the top of them or you know the polythene tunnel that I've got. So I'm gonna be opening those ones up as well. In this bed, I also have my little um, Caraflex cabbages that, I don't know whether they're going to actually form a cabbage or not. They're the little pointy ones, but they're doing well. I have some Komatsuma. I've had real problems with Komatsuma this year. Over on the allotment in the greenhouse, I've got this, well, the my mysterious slug and um, weevil problem. As if you follow me, you'll be able to see um, what I mean. Over here, I have got, oh, and I keep finding them. Look. Slugs. Slugs, who knows what else. And they're starting to go to seed. They're starting to flower. Now I don't mind when um, Asian greens or brassicas, can you see over there a little bit? No, maybe not. My kale is starting to flower. Um, but I really love the flowering tips on kale and also on Asian greens. So for me, I just take the whole lot in and eat it. And I'm thinking I might be taking this stuff in this week and eating it. Mm, yeah. Then I also have two rows of lettuce and they're doing really well. And so are the weeds, by the way. Um, so let's put these canes in here get some more string. I have a lot of plants in there. When I put peas in, I really jam pack them in, but they, they seem to do okay. And then I can actually get to them and water them properly as well. So let's do that. 
So the great thing about peas is they will always find their way, no matter what. So I've put a few more um, canes in here and I've just got to go on the hunt now for a few more canes um, because they are quite tall and they're going to grow really fast now. So um, you can see they're a little bit, oh dear, I probably should have done this a little bit earlier, but oh, they'll, be fine. they'll be fine, they'll be fine, they'll be fine. And it, it means that they're not now flopping on top of my little cabbages here. So um, yeah, this is really exciting to have early peas. I'm also, being Fruits Day today, I'm also going to be sowing my next batch of sugar, uh, what are these called? Oregon Sugar Pod and Sugar Snap Peas. So that will be my last batch uh, before the summer. So that will do us for the summer. And then I do another batch later on in the summer because that's how I grow my peas. The other peas that I've got are in the greenhouse, but not for long. So let's go and deal with those ones, shall we? I'm just giving you a close up of what's going on with these peas. And I grow them really, really thickly. I might give them a water actually. Should I give them a feed? I think I might even give them a feed. Ah, uh, yeah. They look good, really great, very happy with this, very happy indeed. And what I am going to do is I am going to put a, a, what do you call it, a cover over this because um, the pigeons are going to have a go, the pigeons will definitely have a go at my brassicas down there and probably my um, lettuce as well and they're doing really well so I'm going to put some netting over this yep that's a good idea so these are the other peas that I've got on the go I've got two pots of these I've just taken one outside and this one's going outside as well I'm evicting them from the greenhouse these are meteor peas so these are a kind of these are a proper potting pea I did try one the other day um, just as a snow pea or monge too and it wasn't very nice. It was a bit bitter. So yeah, you've got to eat these really as a proper potting pea. Unless of course you like that real astringent bitter taste. I'm bending over because I'm looking at when I sowed these. I sowed these on the 4th of December last year. And these were my kind of experimental peas to see whether I could overwinter peas here in this greenhouse. And ta-da! There you go. <laughs> I can. Um, the greenhouse got down to about, hmm, let me think, minus two maybe. But I do have a little heater in here. So when it was getting really low and when I'd remember to switch the heater on, uh, it, was, it was always above freezing because I didn't want to lose all this stuff that I've got here in the greenhouse. So I just need to tie, put a few ties around this because it is growing um, a lot. I'm just going to put a few ties around the actual wigwam that I've made just to keep these peas up. And then I'm going to put them outside, just outside the door. You'll see, I'll show you where I've put the other one. And I'm hoping that it's not going to be battered by the wind. I might, I'm thinking about actually swapping the position and putting them more over where my water butt is uh, because that's where I've got my green garlic at the moment. So I might do a little bit of a shuffle. I'll move the green garlic over to another wall and I'll put these next to the water butt and then they won't get battered by the wind because you will see the other one is quite tall. Hmm and it's doing a bit of that. So we have to, I have to tie that one up a little bit more as well. Uh, I'm just gonna put another tie on this, then I'll take it out. And then I've just given, I've given the other one a little bit of a feed because these have been going, like I said, since December. And I just feel, even though they look great, I feel like I just need to give them just a little bit of a kind of multi-purpose feed. I'm just using miracle Grow. There. Okay, let's take these out. 
This stuff is called green garlic and this is um, what I use when my garlic from the store is finished. It, you, it won't actually bulb up ever into a proper bulb of garlic but it is absolutely delicious and these were the little um, kind of the cloves that I had that were really kind of piddly and I always put them in pots like this and let me just have a look. See how they're going. Yeah, very nice. They kind they they end up being a little bit like um, big spring onions, but they're um, actual garlic. And these need a water as well. You know, everything needs a water now. I mean, you know, we we have all this rain, don't we? Um, but all the pots pots need watering. Okay, so I am going to now put these because they're nearly ready. I'm going to put them over here. Yeah, I'm going to put them on that wall in between the two veggie pods, I think. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, that's done. A um, little bit of advice. If you're going to move something, don't water it first. Right, let's get the two peas. And I've noticed also, I hope my microphone's on because it is getting starting to get blowy again. So what I've noticed though is that this big one here, I can actually tie onto yeah I'm going to tie it onto my guttering so that's not going anywhere <laughs> yay peas next year hmm I might do another pot because I don't have any other potting peas potting peas in the um in the garden hmm yeah I might do another pot next year hmm right that's that job peas all sorted got to go in and sow some more though um, so I will do that and I sow them in containers six cell containers I've just put all of my pots and my containers in the garage behind and when you need something to show it ain't here is it unbelievable this is the first time that I've been really kind of tidy and now I can't show you but you know those six cell um, containers that you get from the garden center uh, with whatever you might have in them I will sow some more of those I'm gonna I'll do two lots and I do three seeds per cell so that will be great more peas now I'm gonna go in and have some lunch and I just want to show you what I'm gonna have for lunch from the garden here we go here is my lunch so this is a salad that i made last night it looks <laughs> it looks a bit weird but i'll explain what's in it so the main thing is the kale remember that kale i was telling you about in the garden well i took some kale leaves off i took the leaves off the stems um last night and then what you do is you cut it up fine and you massage it with a little bit of olive oil, salt and pepper, and you leave it for about 20 minutes to half an hour. And then um, I have got chickpeas in here. So I put the chickpeas in a pan, roasted them in the oven with some smoked paprika, some onion, onion powder, some garlic powder, salt and pepper. Look how great this looks, this stuff. Then um, they then go in with some chicken that I've got chopped up in here. And I've also got some small um, new potatoes that I roasted the other night. And I've got that in there. I made a dressing, which was just olive oil, um, white wine vinegar, and that was all. And that white stuff you see there is parmesan as well. So that's my lunch. It is absolutely delicious. 
it's Roots Day on the Moon Phase calendar and I am in the greenhouse on the allotment and for once I'm not going to talk about my flowering brassicas because <laughs> I noticed that I talk about them, my calabrese and my cauliflowers, quite a lot. So today I am going to talk about my beetroot instead. Um, I've just watered it here in the greenhouse and I must say in the last few weeks it's really grown quite fast. In here I have two varieties. I have my very favourite Pablo um, and I have my Burpees Golden. Now I'm just looking at when I sowed these. I sowed these on the 3rd of January this year. They're a little slow because I, um, well... <laughs> They were in the module in their modules for quite a while and they were not looking good. So I then put them in the greenhouse. I did have them in my um, south facing dining room. Then I put them in the greenhouse and they started growing quite well actually. And then I thought to myself, ooh, I think I better just do another batch of beetroot just in case these ones don't pick up. And so at home in the kitchen garden, I have another batch of beet another batch of beetroot on the go. Uh, but I do have some different varieties in amongst that one. So here is, like I said, Pablo is an F1. This is the um, beetroot that I grow all the time for my um, well, all year round, round beetroot. It is, I find it fantastic. I find it never goes woody. It has great sizes. I've still got it um, in storage um, in my utility room. It's fantastic. I store my beetroot in damp wood chips in a um, container. Um, and the other one I've got here is the Burpees Golden, which is just beautiful. So if you have an aversion to earthy beetroot, go for a golden beetroot because um, they are totally, totally, totally different. They don't have that kind of earthy taste. They have a very, very sweet taste as well. The only thing with them is they don't pickle as well as the um, red beetroot, I find. I did some small ones. I preserved some small ones uh, one year in some pickling uh, liquid and they went a little bit um, mushy. So they don't really pickle as well. But they are beautiful raw. They are beautiful um, roasted, just gorgeous. And um, so now my beetroot's growing, which is fabulous. And I put it in the greenhouse because I want an early crop of beetroot. So I want these ones to only be small and I want these to take over from the ones that I've got in store. I've still got quite a lot left in store, so these should be fine. I'll just let them grow. And I've put them down the back of the greenhouse here so that I can then start putting stuff down the sides when these brassicas are done. And I don't know, can you see that? There's one just here that is um, flowering, which is my Komatsuna. I mentioned my Komatsuna at home. Um, here I had an issue with a little weevil. So I think I've got a little bag. I use these mesh bags here for harvesting over at the allotment. I don't have a, um, a truck over here. And I think I might pick most of them actually because I've got lettuces growing and the lettuces are starting to look really good as well. The reason why I'm over here on my hands and knees looking at my beetroot is I'm thinking of thinning them out and only I'm only thinning them out because I want them out of here so that I can then put my cucumbers and my melons in here. So if you multi-sow, which is what I do, I multi-sow um, my beetroot. When I, mul when I sow them as early in the year, year as I did in January, I multi-sowed two seeds per module. And um, beetroot is a cluster seed. So you're going to find that you're going to have more than two beetroot anyhow. For instance, I'm just looking at um, a few here. I've got one. I've got four plants in that one. Some of the Pablos. 
yeah, I've got four plants again. Um, so I'm going to thin them out. If now when I do my next sowing, which is what I'm going to go and go home and do, that, that's my next lot of beetroot sowing. Um, I am now going to multi-sow three maybe four seeds per module because these are then going to be harvested um, kind of in August time and I'll, I'm just going to let them grow and they should because the um, weather's right and come good and we've got summer they should grow fast and so I'll get more. Whenever I multi-sow the colder the temperature the less I put in per module because I want them to have a chance. So um, I can start thinning out. See? So I'm going to start thinning these out and at the moment I'm going to leave two um, plants per um, station. I call them a station. I think you do call them a station actually. Here's... This one looks a little bit dodgy so I'm just going to take this one out and leave the other one in. If you don't want to pull um, out your uh, seedlings you can actually snip them off at soil level and I will do with quite a few of these but I think I've pulled these out before and it's it's actually worked quite well um, I am going to leave the ones that look like they're already starting to swell they're the ones that are left see I'm just going to show you um, this particular little patch here and I'm going to show you what I mean by snipping them off. So if you look at this clump here, see that one? That one's already starting to swell, but this one here isn't doing much at all. So I'm just going to come along with my scissors and I'm going to snap, snip it, snip it, snop it. And there it is. It's gone. Yay. And actually I've got five in there, so I need to do a little bit more snipping. But um, you can see that these plants are looking really nice now. Look over there. Really lovely. Yeah, I'm very happy with that. So yeah, that is my beetroot on roots day. And like I said, I'm going home to sow my next lot of beetroot. And then um, they're kind of like an early, early, main crop beetroot and then I'm going to be doing my main crop beetroot for storing end of May. That's the that's the one that I then store. These ones like I said are just eaten small and um, they're absolutely delicious. We do, is that flea beetle? No. Um, we do love beetroot, really love it and I really like it um, small. Mind you, they do store really well, but I do like it small. So I'm just going to get on with this uh, and then I'll just show you some of the lettuce that's doing really well in here as well. And here's some lettuce. So this one here is called Haflex. These are my Salanovas in here. Um, and Salanova is a commercial lettuce that you can get. Um, and they are absolutely fantastic. That's Haflex. Next to it here is soy rat that's a beautiful lettuce isn't it and then let's go around this side just here this is called extranet or i think they've renamed this i think it's called excavo now that's another beauty and i also have a cos just there i've got a bigger one behind me so for my transplanting for roots day um, I have got some spring onions, but they are actually bulbing onions, which I'm going to use as spring onions. Yes. So spring onions come in two different types. You can either get the bunching onions, which are the ones that just stay small as spring onions, or you can get bulbing onions that then you can eat as spring onions. And actually all onions that turn into big bulbs can be eaten small as spring onions. It makes no difference whatsoever. So I hope you can hear me because it, the wind is blowing yet again, but the sun is out, which is quite nice. In this bed, I have got very much a mishmash of 
bulbing onions that I put in, well, well, back in November, I think. And they're all different types. They really struggled over winter, um, but none of them died, which is quite amazing. They're all at different um, stages. Some of them are ready to use. And when I say some, I mean maybe two or three. I did have one last night um, <laughs> in my kale, kale salad, but um, some of them are quite small. I'm gonna leave them in. Yes, and I will harvest these first, obviously, because these are going to be the biggest. But now, when I put in my next lot of spring onions, which are these ones here, and these are looking quite good, actually. Um, these are the red ones. They are Lilia and they are North Holland um, Blood Red. These were sown on the 21st of January. Again, they struggled a little bit. Uh, but when I took them out in the greenhouse, they perked up. And I think it's because onions, all alliums really need a lot of light. And um, they didn't really get a lot of light where they were. So now they've got light and they're looking good. I multi-sowed these. So there's either two seeds per cell, three seeds per cell, and sometimes four seeds per cell. I wasn't really that fast. And now when I um, plant spring onions at this time of the year, I usually plant them round the edge of a bed because they, well, they might be in there for quite a while actually. And I need to use the center for other things. So at the moment, I've got all these happening here. These will go pretty quickly. And then I'm not gonna replant in the middle, but I will, I do replant all the way around the edges. And it just makes things a lot easier. I'm just looking under here, there. That is my beetroot under there. We'll come to that in a minute. Um, and so to plant these out is pretty simple. All I do is I get my dibber, I dib a hole, which I'm going to do here, make it quite large. It's a little bit like how I did the, how I do the um, radish, if you saw me do the radish. Take the actual cell and I stick it in. That's it. Simple. I am going to give the other ones a feed. Uh, I will just give them a multi-purpose feed. Um, so something like miracle Grow, spring, these spring onions I haven't got covered, but I will actually cover them now because um, Allium leaf miner is starting and uh, I, want, I don't want any Allium leaf miner on these. So I will put a little a mesh um, cover over these and they shall be fine. And then I'm going to have some really nice spring onions. I did say last January, and I wasn't going to bring this up, but I thought, oh, well, it's all about transparency, isn't it? Um, I did say last January that I would never be without spring onions ever again. Well, I'm afraid that I um, told a little bit of a porky uh, because I was without spring onions, which is not good when you say that, especially on YouTube. <laughs> Oh dear. All right, the wind is starting again. Um, let me get a few of these in and then let's have a look at this uh, beetroot bed behind. So let's just get one of these out. This is the beauty of these container-wise containers. They've, these have been in here for quite a while and uh, I can't see you. But um, because these container-wise containers have these ridges in them that go downwards, you never get the uh, roots going spirally. I love them, I love them, I love them. They're absolutely fantastic. In here, I have three multi-sown spring onions, and these are the North Holland Blood Red. Really delicious, really nice when they're big. Um, into bulbs but really delicious as uh, normal spring onions. In there, this one I've got a few more. So it looks good, doesn't it, along here? 
along the side. I think it looks really good. I like that. And so in this bed behind, I have my other beetroot that I mentioned earlier. Um, I have some more Pablo. I've got some more Burpees Golden, but I also have some Bull's Blood here and some of the white one, which is called Albina Vereduna. Um, it's a very, very nice uh, beetroot. And actually, I grow it after I um, don't, well, I grow it kind of like as an alternative to turnips because turnips only really grow now and because they will bolt later on. And these are actually doing quite well. When did I plant these? So these I did on the 21st of January. These were the next sowing that I did thinking that I wasn't going to have those other beetroot. And they're actually not that far behind um, the ones in the uh, greenhouse on the allotment. But I have had this cloche on top of them. And as you can see, these are the sugar snaps that I've got behind and they really do need to be set free. So I'm not going to put the um, cloche back on here. Over in that corner there, I also have some more spring onions and I can't remember what variety they are. I've got a feeling they're guardsman and guardsman is a bunching spring onion. Um, I've got some more in the greenhouse uh, in cells growing and that is the one of the um, spring onions that then takes over that I grow kind of for spring summer. Uh, this bed definitely needs a water because everything is very, very floppy in here. So I'm going to weed it and then I will water it. But I just want you to have a look at the beautiful leaves on the bull's blood. Bull's blood is also really good as a um, microgreen because the leaves are just gorgeous. And actually the leaves on all of these are really lovely. The white in particular is really good as well. It's kind of like a, a spinach alternative if you um, want to use it. So again, these are going to be used small. And then when I go to plant my next lot of beetroot out, I'm gonna plant it again along the edges of the bed because it can stay in there. I can grow stuff in the center. I can harvest stuff from the center and it can keep just growing on the outside. And that's just a little tip that um, I will give you about when you want to grow something that needs to stay in the ground for quite a long time. You could even do kind of bulbing onions, your normal main crop onions like that as well. Um, it, that would work really good. So um, yeah, let me just weed this bed and get those peas out. And um, yeah, lovely. Here are the leaves on this beautiful bull's blood. Gorgeous. And they're the leaves on the white one which is really lovely as well. And actually you can eat all beetroot leaves. They're related, beetroot's related to chard. So um, yeah, lovely. Right, so that's it. That's another gardening week from me. Oh, I didn't think I was gonna be able to get out into the garden this week because the weather has been absolutely terrible. But you know, if you try, you get there. So cheers to a Saturday evening. Let's have a little drinky drinky. Mm-hmm. Very nice. Um, I hope you all had a good week. I don't know what the weather is like where you are, but um, like I said, it was a little bit challenging this week. Anyhow, we did get a lot done. We had the fruit stays. We had the root stays as well. And um, all was good. So next week is another week. Um, yeah, I don't know the, what the weather's doing next week. I try not to look ahead. No, I do look ahead actually, because next week um, the, the temperatures are dropping. And so I'm just thinking about my peas that I just uncovered and evicted. Uh, I don't think we're going to get a frost though. I think we should be all right without a frost. Um, at the moment, it is um, blowing a gale again outside. Uh, so um, I hope that they're okay. I kind of tied everything in and uh, that's all you can do. I mean, they've got to toughen up these plants, don't they? If they want to, uh, 
spend a summer here in Lincolnshire. Anyhow, thank you again. Thank you for watching and I will see you next week for my garden vlog. Uh, tomorrow is uh, my next installment of my moon phase gardening and what I will be sowing and growing. Um, I've had some very nice um, messages from people who are trying it out. I also went and did a garden talk this week um, at a WI meeting, which was quite eventful, actually, uh, <laughs> because there were a few people trying to get into, into the hall. But um, it was lovely. The ladies were lovely as well. And we talked about no dig and we talked about moon phase gardening. So see you next time. Cheers and thumbs up. That'd be nice. And also subscribe. See you later. Bye. <laughs>